Uh, at the meeting at EHA 2022, we presented uh, the results of an expanded access study uh, evaluating uh, zanubrutinib as a single agent in 50 patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. The impetus for this study was the fact that the FDA had approved zanubrutinib in November of 2021 for patients with Waldenstrom's. Uh, this was based on the results of the Aspen study. The Aspen study was a randomized uh, study in which 100 patients per arm were comparing zanubrutinib single agent versus ibrutinib single agent. The study was designed to show a difference in BGPR between the two arms. And at the time of the publication in, in 2020, there were no differences between the groups. Uh, the BGPR was maybe a little higher in zanubrutinib versus ibrutinib, but this difference was not statistically significant, and therefore the study was negative. When we looked at the progression-free survival, really there were no differences on that uh, stage either. Where there was a difference was in the side effect profile. Uh, zanubrutinib had lower rates of atrial fibrillation, lower rates of rash and hypertension. Uh, there was a bit more neutropenia, um, but no difference in the, rate, in the rate of infections. So based on that, the FDA approves uh, zanubrutinib. So the idea of running a, an expanded access study uh, was to um, provide zanubrutinib to patients who either didn't qualify for Aspen or, or were not candidates for Aspen or uh, would have not qualified for Aspen. You know, So maybe they had specific performance status issues or they had a specific uh, dysfunction of organs that would have not made them ideal candidates for, for their randomized study, uh, but there were then candidates for this expanded access. So on this expanded access, uh, we put about 50 patients from different centers uh, in the United States, uh, several community centers and a few academic centers to try to provide what we call a real world experience. And I know the, the term real world is a little overused uh, in research nowadays. So we actually put 50 patients in this study. Uh, and not surprisingly, um, this group of patients was older than the group of patients that participated in Aspen. And again, that, that makes sense because this is kind of a more real world experience. But was uh, very encouraging was to see that the efficacy of zanubrutinib in this uh, group of patients was comparable to what was seen in, um, in Aspen with overall response rates, well, close to 90%, you know, and you know, major response rates uh, close to 80%. And uh, the problem with the progression-free survival, which is, I don't think is too representative, is because the follow-up on the study was short. So we started expanded access, and then the FDA approved uh, Zanobrutinib in November of 2021, and that prompted that all the patients in the expanded access went from a research zanubrutinib into a commercial zanubrutinib. And at that moment, the study was stopped. So the follow-up, I think, ranged anywhere between 12 and 15 months. And therefore, I don't think uh, there's a lot of so progression-free survival data that we could share or that this will be meaningful. Uh, an important message, however, of this study, in addition to the safety and the efficacy in terms of response and toxicity, was that um, a number of the patients, about a third of the patients in the study, were able to get uh, zanubrutinib done taken once a week. You know, the, the standard approach is given it twice weekly, 160 milligrams twice a day, two pills twice a day. Um, but there's some data, you know, showing that once a day dosing is reasonable, and that's about four pills per day or 320 milligrams per day on patients. So about a third of the patients were able to get that dose. And again, I agree, the sample size is not great, but we did not see major differences in terms of safety and efficacy between these two groups. So I think uh, the, expand, the results of this expanded access uh, give us the idea that sanobrutinib can be given uh, safely to patients with you know, less than optimal performance. Um, it is effective and is going to work. And it can be given once a day or twice a day. So that gives us some flexibility. I think uh, these results, along with the long-term results of the Aspen study, really establishes sanubrutinib as one of the preferred options for patients uh, with Waldenstrom's, currently approved by the FDA, endorsed by the NCCN uh, with category one preferred regimen as well. So I think those are very important messages from this study.